Hello, welcome back to Pop Simon. This is Cushion here, Action Local Cooking Management Sim. Eh? So, today I'm going to talk about a couple of things that I learned from by playing the game. Um, I kind of wish couple, uh, some things are more clear. Um, I wish they are kind of included in the tutorial because uh, you have to learn lots of things by just playing the game itself. So, I hope this video is helpful and let's get right into it. Okay, so the, on the first day, this is going to be like a second day, the sword day, uh, you're going to get the quest to explore the dungeon, exit the town and explore green ruin. So the first time you're going to go into the green ruin. Okay, let's wait. Hey, what's this? Brand new spatula. Maybe it's a sign. There's no one around. All right, then I can definitely use this. Time to get some ingredients. See, the problem is your character just start with the spatula, right? So I thought this spatula was the weapon that I was carrying it. It turns out it's not. So don't be a dumb dumb like me and carry this like carry this spatula forever. Just equip the spatula on here. Yeah. So basically, you start with the basic spatula, but once you go into the dungeon, you're gonna get this brand new spatula. So don't keep the spatula in the inventory, just get rid of it and equip the new spatula and it's gonna have like a toasty modifier on it. So don't be a dumb dumb. <laughs> get the new spatula onto the weapon slot and get rid of it. So that that way you're gonna have extra slot. So I've been carrying that first spatula for a really long time, which means I grab less resource. <laughs> Because I was I, I was keeping one spatula in the inventory whole time. So don't be a dumb dumb like me. Just get rid of the old spatula, grab the new one, put it into the slot. I wish the game was more clear about that. So that's the one mistake I made. And I know there's a couple of other mistakes I made. I will get to that later on. Okay, so this is the another thing that I didn't notice until it was too late. So basically they every day the NPCs at the front of the fountain. Let's just call this place marketplace. These two NPCs changes every day. I think it's fixed for each day. Basically, like a, for the sweet day, we're gonna have log trader and tailor, and like a sword day, we're gonna have special weapon and furniture of day, special trader, and gonna have like another trader that can exchange ingredient. And today is umami day, which is like a third day. Uh, we're gonna have plant trader, and we're gonna have Trailer, uh, tailor here, not trailer, tailor, I'm sorry. So each day they're gonna have different NPC. And this is very important because I didn't know that until it was too late. So this NPC, the tailor is one of the most important NPC in the game because it will allow you to upgrade your adventure spell and other adventure backpack. If you upgrade a belt, you can hold more portion, um, you know, like a the bubble tea is potion actually. So you can hold more potion basically. And if you upgrade up or the backpack, you can hold more stuff. It's going to increase your inventory space. That is very important upgrade. So I'm surprised Taylor is not included in like tutorial mission because it is very important NPC. And because um, Taylor doesn't come to town every day, the Taylor only comes on sweet day, umami day, and bitter days. So out of five days, you can meet Taylor only three days. So you have to keep that in mind. So basically, the first thing I should have done is look around the town, which I didn't. I thought these NPCs was fixed, but it's not. So don't make the same mistake as I did. Make sure you upgrade. Okay. So basically, this is day three, right? This is the first day after your first dungeon. So make sure you spend your initial 200 gold on Taylor. Upgrade your backpack because you have nothing else to spend on the, after the first day. So on day three, there's nothing you can spend on because the furniture shop closes on umami day. So you can't spend it on the furniture. You can't spend it on anything else because 200 gold is not enough to even buy the weapon, anything else. So make sure you upgrade your adventures backpack on day three. And make sure, make sure you can you keep upgrading the backpack. I mean, belt it really depends, but I think backpack is more important at the beginning. So make sure you upgrade your backpack because that's going to make a huge difference. 
See, now we, I can hold more than, so initially it was 10, but now I can hold up to 15. So that's a huge difference. I wish I knew that before. I should have been more careful. I kind of wish they include this all, like as a part of the tutorial. Like, I mean, meeting the townspeople, like, um, yeah, you're gonna get this like a side quest, meeting the townspeople. Taylor should have been included here because Taylor is very important NPC. But it's not included here, so we, I didn't know until it was too late. So just keep that in mind. Don't make the same mistake as I did. Upgrade your backpack on day three. Remember that. Okay, so another thing I want to talk about is when to open the restaurant and when to go into the dungeon. It's about your schedule. So when you wake up, the first things in the morning, uh, it's going to be 9 a.m. And as you can see, the clock is ticking and it's, going, it's moving around. And, and you can see this is a lunch rush and this is like um, tea time, I guess. And then this is like a dinner rush right here. So we have three rush time. The problem is the game really doesn't tell you um, any kind of like schedule time. I mean, if you go into the town, so you're gonna get this like e like a mails um, at the beginning of the game. So it's, this is going to explain the shop when the shops close and then check the shop for the opening hours and whatnot. But the, this doesn't what this doesn't tell you is if you go here like for the, for the example bubble tea shop showers is nine from nine a.m. to twelve twenty one hours just basically nine a.m. to nine p.m. and it's closed on Aisha on sweet day Jenju on Saturday. So you have to keep that in mind because there are a couple of really important NPC like Carpenter that allows you to upgrade your restaurant and buying the furniture is closed on Umami Day. So he's not here. So you can't do anything on Umami Day with the Carpenter. Same deal with the Smithy. They, they, they each have different day like closing day and it's basically Smithy closed on Salty Day. So you got to keep that in mind. And also another thing is that you can open the restaurant from 9 a.m to 23 basically 11 p.m so the restaurant is going to automatically gonna close at 23 hours so keep that in mind you can open at any given time so you can you can open it for like a uh, one hour then close it then open it back up again you can do that and let's talk about the dungeon um in order, to, you, in order to get the ingredient, you have to go into the dungeon. The thing is, the game doesn't tell you when you can go into the dungeon. I mean, you can leave anytime you want from 9 a.m. to 18 hour. So you have to leave before 18. Otherwise, after 18, you can't leave. It's, it's, it's going to say it's too late to go into the dungeon. So you have to keep that in mind. So basically... You want to leave, you want to open the shop until like a 17 hour, then leave for the dungeon, leave for the dungeon before 18 hours kicks in because at the 18 hour, you can't leave anymore. But the problem is you, you will see at the moment. So it's going to be 12 o'clock it's, it's really soon. Okay. As you can see, we are slowly getting this 1%, like 2%, 3%. We are slowly getting this, um, this mark on here, this like 3%, it's going to increase. And as you can see, it's, it's decreasing our total health. Since now it's 5%. So as the time goes on, the character is going to get tired. And we're going to get this like a total health debuff. So basically, if you want to leave for the dungeon with like a full health, you have to leave before 12 hours. Otherwise, you're going to... If you leave too late, uh, you can get up to 30% health debuff. But I think I think if you can survive, I think it's I think it's a good idea to open the shop until 17 hours and leave for the dungeon before 18. So you are gonna you are still gonna get like 30% debuff, but you can still leave for the dungeon. That's important. You can just leave for the dungeon, get as many ingredients as possible get many materials possible, but that's going to be like a very optimized schedule. 
So you have to keep that in mind. But it's up to you to decide whether you want to go into the dungeon with the full health or you want to go in, maybe you just want to spend the whole day just, just managing the restaurant. It's up to you because you can't earn gold um, while you're in the dungeon, but you can only earn gold by, manage, by selling the food at the restaurant. So you have to make the choice. So at 12 hours to 14 hours is a lunch rush. So you're going to get more customer during that time. Uh, you're going to get like um, tea, tea time right here. Um, you, you're going to get much more customer, but yeah. So it really depends on your choice. So I wish I knew that before. The game really doesn't tell you. So you have to basically learn by playing the game, basically. So I kind of wish the game's more clear about this, like I'm showing you the sign or something that kind of explains. Like maybe you talk to a soldier, they tell you like, oh, you can you can only leave uh, until up to like eighteen hours or something. They don't they don't do that. So they don't do that. So you have to just learn by playing the game. Yeah. So that's the third mistake I made, and I wish that it was helpful. Okay, so let's talk about upgrades. Just so you can upgrade your restaurant, you can upgrade your cooking utensil, you can upgrade your gear, you can put the mod on your gear. So let's talk about those. So in order to upgrade your cooking utensil or fridge, you have to click on it and you will see this up arrow icon. And if you click on it, it will tell you how much material you need, how, how many um, gold you need. If you meet the requirement, you can click on this button and it's going to upgrade instantly. So your cooking utensil and fridge is going to upgrade instantly. So keep that in mind as long as you have materials and gold. So, so if you upgrade your fridge, you're going to have more space in the fridge. So it is a very good idea to upgrade the fridge. And cooking utensil, if you upgrade it, um, it's going to go into tier 2. And you, you you can have more like a queue, and once you upgrade the work, once you upgrade this enough, uh, you can cook higher tier dishes on it as well. So it's very important to upgrade your fridge and cooking utensil as much as possible. So now let's talk about upgrading your restaurant. In order to upgrade your restaurant, you have to go to the carpenter shop when it's available, and talk to the elder. And you will see this upgrade button here. If you click on it, you will see how, how many materials or gold you need. And if you met the requirement, you can click on upgrade restaurant. It is going to take two days to upgrade it. So it's not going to happen instantly. So you have to keep that in mind. But it's very important to upgrade your restaurant because if you upgrade your restaurant, you will have more spaces. So you, will, you can put more furniture. You can put more like tables and stores so you, you can get more customer. Also, the amount of cooking utensil you can put in your restaurant is going to increase as well. So that's going to be very important. And also, the, um, the counter is going to increase. The counter is where you put your food. So your customer will grab the food from the counter. And if your counter increases, you can put more dishes out on the counter. So it is very important to upgrade your restaurant as much as possible but it is going to take time. And another thing to note is that when you click on this upgrade restaurant button, it is going to take two days. But during that, during that time, the elder is going to be gone from this carpenter shop and he's going to be standing around here to upgrade the restaurant. Because he's working on upgrading the restaurant, he's going to be gone from the carpenter. So you can't use the carpenter shop while he's working on upgrading your restaurant. So if you really need to buy some furniture, I suggest you buy them before you upgrade your restaurant because once you click on the upgrade but upgrade your upgrade restaurant button, he's gonna be gone for two days. So you can't use the capital shop. So it's a very good idea to, you know, figure out what, what kind like if you need like a extra table or store, it's it's a good idea to buy them before you upgrade your restaurant. So keep that in mind. So let's talk about upgrading your gear. So in order to upgrade your gear, you have to go to Smithy and you have to click on the upgrade button. But as you can see right now, I can't upgrade anything because you can't upgrade your currently equipped gear. So in order to up upgrade the gear, you have to unequip them first. 
then talk to Smithy again. So since now I have my gears in my inventory, now I can upgrade them. So if you click on the weapon, you can see the damage goes up by one. And as long as you have enough materials and money, you can upgrade your gear. Uh, currently, right now, I just don't feel like upgrade is worth it. Like it increases your damage by one for the weapon. And it's, it's going to increase your health by five on your glove or boot. I mean, the health wise, I think it's okay. Kind of okay. I, I kind of wish it's more, but right now, uh, compared to the price you're paying for, upgrade doesn't just doesn't feel like it's worth it. Hopefully, they change the value just a bit because, yeah. And also, another thing to note is that the reason why you can't upgrade the weapon you have on your equipped slot is because it is going to, once you click on this button, it is going to take a day to upgrade that gear. You cannot upgrade multiple gear at the same time. So you have to choose one and you have to click on it. And it is going to be removed from your inventory for a day. So it's, it's, a, it's a good idea to have spare gear set because if, if you click on it and it's gonna be gone for like whole day. So it's really up to you. So whether to go into the like uh, go into the dungeon with the extra set of gear or just go into the dungeon without the gear. Yeah, I I really wish they changed this just a bit because wait wait the fact you have to wait for a day to upgrade one gear is just too painful and the the amount the value you get from the upgrading your gear seems really really weak. <laughs> Hopefully they change that. So okay, so in order to add mod or change the mod on your gear, you have to go to the brewery and you have to click on brew and you have to have that equipment on the inventory, the ones that you want to brew because the brew also takes a day similar to upgrading your gear at the smithy. So I really wish they changed it so you can upgrade or brew your gear instantly because the fact that you have to the wait for a day to upgrade your weapon or change the mod on your gear it's very painful <laughs> anyway um since i have only one mod on my throwing plate i want to i will place the equipment here and you can see there's a, like two slot for the mod and if i click on the empty slot i can add dishes to increase the mod chances so if i put caramel here you will see this icon which means it's going to increase the chance to get these. I'm not sure if this icon is correct because I thought I would get like increased chance to get like a sweet damage, but it's not highlighted here. So I don't know if it's bug or not. So you can see the possible mod you can get here. You can, you can have up to like tier three mod. So you have to experiment it a bit because each dish has like a different modifier. So once you click on it, click this, uh, the initial cost is 500, but it's the, the cost is going to increase each time you do the brewery on your particular gear. So you have to keep that in mind. The initial cost is 500 gold, but it's going to keep go up until 3000, I think. So if I click on it, coins and select dish will be used. You want to put this proceed. Yes. And you, you can choose. You, to keep the mod you currently have, or you can replace the mod. And if you modify this slot, that's slow with luck. It will take one day to change the new mod. Are you sure? So if I don't change it, uh, it's gonna go back. It's so if you have like you can see the cost just increased. So if you keep the current mod. And uh, you can, it's going to, it's, go, it's still going to use your dishes and the money, but you can keep the equipment as it is. But if you click on it and if you replace the mod, and then it's going to take a day. And I have, to, I have to come back tomorrow to the brewery to get the gears. 
So right now I can't use my drawing plate. So you have to keep that in mind. So when you upgrade your weapon or when you replace the mod um, by using the brewery, it takes a day. So it is very good idea to have spare equipment or valuable if you want to go into the dungeon at the same time as you are doing your upgrade and brewery. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let's talk about dungeon just a bit. So knowing when to leave when you are in the dungeon is very important because the reason you are in the dungeon is because you are trying to gather ingredients and materials you need, right? So once you have enough, you can just leave. Um, you can click on this icon or you can just push L button and it's going to take a few seconds. And once this bar reaches full, your character is going to leave, but you have to do that in safe place but because this can get interrupted by um, enemy. So you have to do it in the safe place. It's, you can't do it in the boss room because boss is just going to hunt you down anyway. So it's very important to leave, when, know, knowing when to leave. Right now, my HP is like 54. It's like I, I'm at half health and I'm at front of this um, the enemy rush room. Um, this also indicates the boss room as well. So if you see like this icon be before you going into that particular room, you have to think a bit carefully because once you go in, the door is going to the door is going to close and it's going to seal you inside. And the enemy is going to start spawn around. So right now I have enough ingredient, right? So I can just leave. But I can I can go in. I I can I can be be greedy, you know. But the the reason you want to the reason knowing when to leave is important is because if you go in, like if you've been greedy, doors are closing and enemies are gonna start up here, right? Okay, let's see. So if I get knocked out in the dungeon, uh, come on, work on it. Thank you. So if I get knocked out in the dungeon, uh, I will bring back some ingredient or materials. But as you can see, this X mark on this five inventory slot, that means I have I have lost all this ingredient or materials. So generally, it's better to bring back the goods you currently have rather than getting knocked out in the dungeon and bringing less ingredient or material. So knowing when to leave when you're in the dungeon is very important. So you have to watch out for the boss room or the monster rush room like this one. If you're if if you have too low health, it's it's better to just leave rather than risking it because you're gonna lose lots of <laughs> ingredient or materials. So keep that in mind. Knowing when to leave when you're in the dungeon is very very important okay so one thing i forgot to mention is that once you fail the dungeon once you get knocked down your character is going to go back to your restaurant automatically and the day is going to advance to next day and that means the save is going to happen automatically it is going to override your current save so if you don't want that to happen when you get knocked out in the dungeon don't click on the dungeon fail screen just quit the game and if you restart the game, you can start from your previous starting, previous start of the day. But once you click on the dungeon fail screen, once you go back to your restaurant, it is going to override your save. So if you don't want that to happen, quit the game when you get knocked out. Don't click on the dungeon fail screen. Yeah. So I think that's all the tips I currently have right now. Hopefully it's been helpful. Yeah, I wish I knew this before because yeah, right now I'm up to part three, right? Yeah, knowing all this before could have been really, really helpful. So I'm probably gonna go back and gonna start from day one and I will try to make it as efficient as possible. I will try to compare and see how much I advanced compared to my previous, previous let's play. So, I mean, it, it, it's going to be easy to catch up because I'm only up to day 7. 
So we'll see about that. Anyway, hopefully this has been helpful. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys on my playthrough. Um, it's gonna be part four. Uh, we'll try to catch up. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys on the next episode. Take care. Bye.